So today I will talk about involution of similarities. So do you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, we, we can hear you. But Oops. You, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, Okunkov once said the syntactic similarity are the real algebra of the 21st century. So I'm interested in involution of symplectic similarities. So maybe involution of symplectic similarities are the symmetric space of the 21st century. Well, I mean, of course, we are, it is far, very far away to classify symmetric spaces in the sense of 21st century. So I don't intend to talk about the general theory about involution of symplectic similarities. So I will just discuss examples of involutions, in particular the case of quiver varieties of type A. Okay. So I recall the uh, notation for quiver varieties of type A. So I consider uh, quiver of type A. So V1 to Vn and W1 to Wn are vectors, finite dimensional complex vector spaces. And I consider uh, linear maps between them like in this form and M is the symplectic vector space of all linear maps. Symplectic form is a natural pairing between two arrows in opposite directions. And G is a product of linear, linear groups of VIs. And then assi I assign two weights of uh, type AN V algebra. So lambda is a dimension that I for times fundamental, I's fundamental root. And the mu is lambda minus uh, dimension V i times alpha i. This is the usual, uh, note, usual weight for assigned for quiver varieties and its relation to representation theory. So, anyway, then uh, quiver varieties are defined as a Hamiltonian induction of M by G. And I'm I will consider two versions. So first one is M0, which is categorical quotient. So you just take the uh, zero set of the moment map and take the uh, category quotient by G. And another is a GIT quotient. I pick up a character uh, from G to C star. So a whole group of homomorphism from G to C star. I choose a generic one and I take a GIT deduction. So maybe chi, chi is just a product of determinant. And I assume mu is dominant here after. So by a certain wild group symmetry, it is not the cross of generality. And we regard uh, lambda and mu as partition of large n. Large n is equal to sum of i times dimension of w i. So this is a usual uh, convention from, from weights of n to, to partitions. And I draw a corresponding Young diagram. So, first law is dimension W1 plus dimension W2, and so on. And uh, no, no, first column. And second column is dimension W2 and dimension W3 plus so on. And then I also consider the transpose. So, this is the transpose of the, the Young diagram in the usual sense. And in this particular case, it is. Uh, one appears in dimension W1 times, two appears in dimension W2 times, and so on. And the level L uh, is just uh, first, uh, the length of first column, so lambda one, this is equal to dimension W1 plus, the, the, the plus dimension WN. So this is a standard notation. Then uh, quiver varieties of type A have four faces. Uh, first one is quiver variety, as I just mentioned. And the second one is the intersection of the nilpotent orbit to closure and the slowly slice. Where, so we take two, two uh, nilpotent orbits corresponding to partitions, and I choose the transport partition. And uh, so this is a, a partition of uh, size n, large n, 
and uh, so transpose mu is the general form. And by its definition, mu is uh, less than or equal to lambda by the, in the dominant order. So in, in, I, if I take transpose, then uh, transpose mu is greater than or equal to transpose lambda. So this intersection is a non entity. So in, in the later of my talks, uh, my talk, I, I, I will denote this intersection by n, large n, by this. Thing. And this uh, GIT quotient correspond to uh, one replaced in the near potent orbit closure by uh, resolution given by uh, partial, for a certain partial for a couple of people chosen. So this is a symplectic resolution of, of near potent orbit closure in that way. And if you take intersection with the inverse image of the slope slice, then this intersection is a, a symplectic resolution of this intersection. So this is well known. I mean, the construction is very wrong. And I also consider uh, uh, G, if it, uh, the, the space which I denote by large capital G. So this is the affine Grassmannian slice to the orbit through transpose lambda. Again, the, uh, this transpose lambda is, is uh, no, no, this is a partition, but again, considered as a weight of GLF. And then uh, I take the slice to this smaller orbit in, in this closure of this larger orbit, or GLO of transpose. And the resolution is given by considering the, the so called convolution diagram for the alpha gas magnet. And the fourth phase e is which I denote by capital C. So this is a Coulomb branch. So this quiver variety e is also isomorphic to Coulomb branch of quiver gate of type A, L minus one. So L minus one, L minus is SLL, and which is same, same as this rank L here before the alpha gas magnet. And uh, resolution of the Coulomb branch is given by the, the, the so called flavor symmetry. So, this is the maximal torus of general, of general linear groups of, of doubles of framing vector space. Okay. And then uh, it is known all those four spaces are isomorphic to each other. So, by, by result of various people. So quiver varieties and uh, near potent orbit, uh, intersection with near potent orbit slice, uh, which was already first found in the categorical quotient by myself and then generalized to a resolution by Maffei and also Mark Wicks Bibloff uh, gave different proof. And Mark Wicks Bibloff also showed that this quiver variety is isomorphic to this Avangrat uh, magnet slices. And then finally, uh, in more recent work with Leberman and Finkelberg, we proved that the Coulomb branch is isomorphic to and glass magnet slices. So all four spaces are all isomorphic to each other. Any question or comment? Is it okay? Okay, then uh, I uh, do like to consider involution on each face. And each phase of quiver variety of type A has natural involution. So first I consider the, the, the capital N, which is intersection of important orbit and so the slice. Then uh, it's, we just equip symmetric or symplectic form on, on this vector space here. So in order to having a symplectic form, I must assume N to be equal, of course. Then uh, I have an involution on GL, the D algebra GLN by X maps to the it's adjoint. Then uh, this, this operation induces naturally involution on those intersection or uh, it's symplectic relation. And if I consider the fixed point set of the involution or maybe component of the fixed point set, this is a uh, similar variety, but you replace uh, GLN by SON or SPN. So I hope this is very clear. And you can consider similar uh, involution for the affine Grassmannian. 
So again, uh, I choose a symplectic uh, symmetric form. Uh, but here, uh, instead of C of large n, I choose C of large, uh, C, C of small l, right? Then uh, from G, GLL, I just to get a fine glass manual slice for SOL or SPL. And next one, so quiver varieties, in the case of quiver varieties, might not be so well known, but there is a standard one. So you consider, we are considering type A quivers. So there's a diagram of automorphism by uh, like represented, represented in this figure. So the, the symmetry along the middle. Then uh, I use um, the notation that the, the vertex i is sent to vertex i star, right? So this is a pair of vertices. Then uh, I choose uh, uh, isomorphism between w i and the w i star, so the corresponding uh, vector uh, vector space, framing vector space at the corresponding vertex. And if n is odd, there is a middle uh, vertex which is fixed by this invalidation. Then uh, I, I, I cho choose uh, involution on this vector space, or I regard this double middle back frame vector space as a representation of Z3. Then uh, it induces, since this is a equivalent variety, it's defined uh, for how to say, uh, and given just by the moment the map uh, equal zero and uh, GIT deduction, this involved diagram automorphism induces an isomorphism on, on the quiver variety. In particular, I use the, the, this, this isomorphism to, to this, how to say, so the, the, this condition, because otherwise uh, so, so this, how to say, quiver variety, I, I must say, I must understand double i to be double, double i start to be the, anyway, I hope uh, this is clear. So I have involution. If I fix isomorphism, we have an involution on quiver. And you can also, uh, it, it is also easy to check that what is the components of the exponent set. Then uh, you see that if uh, n is odd, then this is equivalent by this of type D, type D, and uh, rank is given by that, this formula, n plus 3 over 2. And if n is even, this is a n over 2. So each phase of equivalent uh, variety of type A gives involution, n and g and q. So I denote involution by iota of n, iota of g, and iota of q. Then uh, you, you, it is easy to observe that they, they are in fact different involutions. So for example, that, that, that's uh, one way to see this, they are different is that the intersections, uh, no, no, fixed point sets are different there is no reason to be, they, they are to be same, the, the new potent orbit and intersections for SON or SPN is something due to assigning as many as for SON or SPN, and so on. So it means that we have at least three involutions on quiver varieties of type A, right? So it means that somehow if once you consider this, this line, once you start to explore involution on quiver, involution on symplectic singularity or its resolution, somehow classification of involution seems to be not so simple. So you must use somehow in order to have uh, natural involution, somehow you need to use different phases. But anyway, so it, it, once you understand that there are at least three involutions, then it is natural to ask uh, what are the uh, involution for the intersections or in, in, in involution for the affine glass manner in terms of quiver variety description in the original definition of the quiver variety. And of course, you can ask the same problem for e, 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 each, each phase of quiver variety of the 
So describe the different two different involution which are not so obvious in the original definition uh, should be some some any as it is involution so you, so you should have some kind of description this but I am I am most familiar with Kibabite so I asked this question for Kibabite. And in fact, I think it is most interesting question to ask is, I mean, because recently people are interested in Coulomb branches. So it is most natural to ask this question for Coulomb branches. And I have, uh, for, for this particular uh, uh, case, I, uh, in, in recent ongoing work with uh, Amihai Hanani and Mike Misha, I think about, I, I, I I understand uh, this problem for Coulomb branch, but somehow uh, we still don't understand how to understand the fixed point in fixed point in, in Coulomb branch in terms of the just using the definition of the Coulomb branch. So I just describe I, I will describe only the fixed point set uh, as Coulomb branch of another quick another case study in data of my talk. So maybe I repeat. So I can describe the, the involution in terms of Coulomb branches, but somehow, and also because I know that the fact that the Coulomb branches as a uh, particular case of Kubernetes and type A, so I know that the fact are the fixed point set, but unless we use this isomorphism between Coulomb branch and Kubernetes and type A, I don't know how to describe fixed point. And I think this is an interesting question to, to ask. And I still don't know the answer. So anyway, let me go on. And uh, it is very easy to answer the question for categorical quotients. So maybe I'm not sure you are familiar with uh, original motivation for the definition of river varieties. So quiver variety was defined as certain modular space of instantons on the quotient of R4 divided by finite cyclic group. But in, in this type A, there are very uh, slight modification of this uh, construction. So M0 lambda mu is a partial compactification of modular space of framed S1 equivalent you will instant on zone R4. And the lambda and the mu are corresponding to the uh, representation of S1 at uh, zero and the infinity. Zero and the infinity are the fixed point of the compactification of R4. And also, uh, you, instead of S1 equivalent instant, you, you can also consider SU2 equivalent instant. And Basically, because I mean, you, you consider the Mackay quiver for uh, representation of S1 or S2. So, usually people consider the Mackay quiver for finite, finite subgroup of S, S, SL, SL, SL2 or SU2. But you can also consider infinite in, Mackay quiver for infinite group. And the Mackay quiver is just considering the representation of group and the tensor with the natural two dimensional representation and take a tensor product decomposition. And it does make sense for S1 and S2, that's the groups. And if you do like the Mackay quiver, then for S1, it is uh, infinite quiver in both direction. And for SU2, it is a uh, infinite quiver in one direction. And then yes, if you consider the just uh, usual modular space, which Meaning that it is something to do with the representation of Mackay quiver for, but it is it stops at the finite finite vertices. So then you just get type A quiver. And so from the modular space of frame this by equivalent instantons, you immediately see that this is uh, not immediate. So it is by basically the observation by Breton, I think about. So this is uh, the fine glass manual slice for GLA. And for the second 
So you must use the result of Kronheimer. So Kronheimer cons considered SU2 equivalent instantons for arbitrary group. And he showed that so this is the intersection of nilpotent orbit and the slices. Uh, maybe I didn't say that. So you have a representation of SU2 at zero and infinity. So it's a homomorphism of SL2 to UN. So it is it can be by 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 this. Jacobian Mordov, so it is so even for general group G, so it corresponds to the nilpotent orbit. And the Kronheimer uh, proved that such statement for general G. So by combining Kronheimer's result and editing description, we immediately see that the correspondence between quiver varieties and uh, affine Grassmannian slice and also quiver varieties and intersections of nilpotent. Okay. And then uh, for this particular case, uh, when the, the uh, if you don't uh, use uh, GIT quotient and if you just use a categorical quotient, it is well known how to modify the ATHM description for special orthogonal and symplectic. So this is almost very, very similar to the uh, diagram automorphism, which I explained, but slightly modified. So instead of uh, isomorphism between double I and double I star, I choose Okay, uh, do you hear me? <laughs> Zoom warning or? Uh, I definitely do. I don't know. Well, now it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Now it's okay. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, it was not a Zoom warning. Okay, uh, we take instead of just isomorphism, instead of isomorphism between WI and WI star. So I choose also dual space to WI star. So I have a pairing between the uh, vector space, frame the vector space here and the frame vector space. Here. So this is basically because I mean I, you should regard this uh, the, this vertex as the this this quiver as a Mackay quiver for S one. Then uh, and the middle is in fact way to zero and you. So this, this has a way to k, and this has a way to minus k. So the, the, this S, S1 is with, with way to k, and S1 is way to minus k are uh, dual space teacher. So that's the, the reason why we also need to choose uh, pairing between double and double I star and also dual space. And in the middle vertex, so we should have the isomorphism between W n plus one over two uh, with its dual by symmetric or sym symmetric or symplectic. Okay, so then uh, it involves uh, it induces uh, involution on quiver variety at least for the categorical quotient, and this construction that cannot be uh, directly generalized to to GIT quotient because for GIT quotient I take the uh, I mean, implicitly, I also need to choose uh, similar isomorphism between. I mean, it is the quotient, so it doesn't quite make sense, but maybe in the study, so you should imagine that we should choose the isomorphism between VI and VI star of dual. Then uh, determinant, determinant is not invariant. Character, group homomorphism is not invariant under this. So it doesn't induce. Uh, no, no, maybe, maybe I, I, I explain here. So I first take transpose of linear maps and then apply the, the diagram automatically. Then taking transpose doesn't uh, commit with the, the, this taking the uh, determinant. So uh, it doesn't involve the involution on, on the uh, GIT quotient, but it induces involution on the categorical quotient. Okay, 
Then uh, it is not difficult to study the fixed point set. And a uh, fixed point set is uh, Hamiltonian deduction of, of this quiver. So you take the half of this original quiver. So I stop at Vn plus one over two. But so here, the order V1, V2, Vn minus one, this, the group acting on those vector spaces is general linear groups. But in this middle vector space, the group acting on here is not a general linear group. So because we take uh, the pairing between uh, for the middle of them vector space, we should replace the linear group by SP or also not. And then uh, I also impose uh, this kind of duality. So I have an arrow A here and opposite arrow B and the linear mass corresponding linear map is transport feature. So this is a equivalent. Then uh, except that we cannot put, maybe so we should remember that here we can put uh, the IT stability condition, but here in the, at the middle vertex, we cannot put uh, the uh, character because the group, act, group acting on this middle vector space is SPO, so there's no non-trivial group over the system, okay? And the involution for, for the needle potent orbit intersection is very similar, but we don't apply the, the diagram automatically. Okay. We just apply, uh, we just take uh, the iso uh, pairing between WI and its dual. So it is basically because, so again, you, you sh should rem remind uh, the uh, representation of. So this, this quiver was the Mackay quiver for, for S1, but for needle potent orbit, as I remarked, you should consider the Mackay quiver for SU2. And for each irreducible representation, so, so each vertex is irreducible representation of SU2. So uh, according to highest weight, so it is either symplectic or symmetric. So dual space is isomorphic to each other to itself, and it is uh, alternating to, uh, if you increase uh, the weight, highest weight, it is alternating to symmetric or symplectic, right? So accordingly, uh, you can describe the fixed point set. So this is uh, very similar like this, but now V1, V2, and so on are either or symmetric or, or symmetric or symplectic vector spaces. So the group acting on those vector spaces also going to group or symplectic groups. And the framing vector space is also alternating SP or SP and so on. And then, uh, so this is uh, the notation which physicists usually use. And the condition uh, on linear maps is again like here uh, this duality. So vector, uh, linear maps between gauge vector space and frame vector space is this condition S type of P. And for uh, linear maps between O of V1 and SP of V2 and so on, is this condition C type of P. And in fact, this. It's, this is called also symplectic quiver in physics literature. And this quiver, this, this Hamiltonian reduction was appeared in the work of Kraft processes much before physicists uh, started to explore. Uh, at least in the special case when all W2, W3 and so on are all zero. In this, in, in this particular situation, Kraft Prosesi studied the uh, uh, Hamiltonian reduction, and they show that they uh, show that this Hamiltonian reduction is a near potent of the closure for the classical groups. And they used this description to, to show that many near potent of the closures are normal, and also in some cases, uh, near potent of the closure are not normal. So they have explicit criterion for the normality of the uh, near potent orbit closure. 
And the dimensions, I mean, so near potent orbit again correspond to partitions, and to those dimensions of vector space are uh, correspond to uh, parts of near potent, parts of partitions. Okay. So anyway, I, I don't use the, the, the detail of the uh, craft process description, but anyway, so you just get something uh, which is something to do with uh, uh, nilpotent orbit for classical groups by just considering the, the this fixed concept of this kind of equation. Okay, any question? Okay, uh, so involution on GIT quotient is more, more involved, unfortunately. So uh, this is the new ingredient is the so-called reflection factor. So uh, let me go, let, let me slowly explain. So we first, so again, I'm considering the case of affine glass manual spaces. So I choose as again as before. So we consider the we take a uh, isomorphism between W i and the W i star dual of W i star. So in particular, uh, maybe I didn't explain that, but lambda star, which is just I apply this, this diagram automorphism, extend the diagram automorphism to, to wait. So this is must this is because W i equals to w, so because of this. Is its dimension is equal to the WI star. So this must be fixed. Lambda must be fixed by diagram. So we, at least we should choose such, such a vector. And for simplicity, we also choose mu to be say, 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 same, same condition, but for simplicity, we assume mu to be zero. So more general case, I, I, I can treat, but it's a little bit complicated. So I just restrict myself to the case mu equal, simplest case of mu equal zero. Then I consider the composite of the following of, of isomorphism. So I choose GIT quotient and chi of lambda is zero. Then I take, as, as in the categorical quotient case, I take the transpose. So then, uh, so because of this, you can consider it as a, I don't know. Uh, so this is the lambda and the mu are not changed, but the stability parameter chi or you use for GIT quotient is changed to the opposite one. So if you use chi is determinant, product of determinant, then opposite one is product of inverse of determinant. Then I apply again the diagram automorphism. So then I get, so I again apply the, the diagram automorphism to the, to the group homomorphism chi. So I get the minus of chi star. Yeah. And lambda star, the two weights are also replaced by star, but I assume lambda star is equal to lambda. So in the categorical quotient case, because chi is equal to zero, I go come back to the original space. But because chi is non-trivial, we, we, we are we just to get isomorphism to, to different spaces different space, so I don't want to get the involution. So I compose with the so-called reflection functor for the longest element of the wild group for type A. Then uh, reflection functor is an isomorphism between the uh, two quiver varieties. So two weights, the first weight, highest weight are fixed, and the second weight, which was mu in general, was changed by this wild group element, W0. So if you, I take mu here, and then this, this result is W0 mu, the usual action, not the dot action. Sorry, I, I put the dot, but it's not, it's the usual action. So if zero, zero is fixed by W0, so this is zero. <clears throat> but now you see that if I apply W0, and also stability parameter is changed according to wild group. So if I change uh, this by W0, then uh, W0, the longest element is 
related to the diagram automations in the following way. So if you apply W0 to alpha i, simple root alpha i, then it is minus of alpha i star. So this you can consider as a one of the definition of the diagram automata. So, so I apply minus W0 to chi star, then it go back to chi. So the, the first space which you start with and the space which you end up are the same. So you get involution from, from this M chi of lambda z, right? So this is a little complication, but you must somehow need to use some isomorphism between two quiver varieties. So weights, second weights are weight, but in this case, the second weight is zero, it's okay. And the stability parameter is changed, but in this particular case, I choose uh, the, the, the transpose and diagonal and longest element to be returned back to the original state. Okay. And in fact, I, I use, I, I, I considered this, this involution a long time ago in order to understand uh, instantons on, on, on C R4. In fact, it's not R4 divided by finite cycle. So you, if I put the stability parameter, then it is the equivalent it describes instant on, on the resolution of R4 divided by finite cycle. And I'd like to have a similar de description. So, so the original equivalent variety is unitary instant on for unitary group. And I want to have a description, similar description for, for classical groups. And for R4, it was, as I said, it was well known, but for Resolution, it's not so straightforward as it turns out. So we need to understand what we call reflection function. So anyway, so uh, this is the reason why I, one of the reasons why I, I studied the reflection. And the HM Lee uh, considered a similar construction for involution for nilpotent orbit, uh, intersection of nilpotent orbit and slices. So this is uh, the number for that in the archive. So again, choose uh, in sy symmetric symplectic form between the same vector space for same, same the, the same vector, same frame, same, same vertex. Then uh, like in this case, uh, so you have, you know, so this lambda star is not, uh, you don't, Need in mind, but if you try to do the same kind of composition to, to, to go come back to the original space, you need to impose this condition. Mu must be equal to double zero of mu, which is minus of mu. So, so you need this condition. And also you must impose chi is also is fixed by this diagram model. So if you start with uh, type a n quiver with n even, uh, n odd, then somehow you don't have, uh, so this, this, this is some constant. You, 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 you cannot just take uh, arbitrary powers of data. Maybe I just see the power product of data, but it, it is okay. But if I, I can also consider that some powers of the product of some powers of determinant through power, power might be different. But if I impose this condition, so the power must be must be the same for the vertex i and i star. So anyway, so if you start m chi over lambda mu, then I take transpose to m minus chi over lambda mu, and then I apply the reflection functor m chi over lambda w zero mu, then because of this condition, I choose this way, then uh, this result is the same uh, vector space, uh, same, same space as you started this. And H and D, in fact, studied a particular case and he observed that in some, some, speci some, some specific choice of lambda mu, uh, it is uh, uh, actually the intersection, I mean, the symplectic resolution of the intersection of new potent orbit and the slice, which is given by the pullback of the Springer, Springer resolution. 
Okay. So in that sense, I mean this this is very natural. Both both are very natural construction. And these are the uh, description. So any question or comment? Maybe maybe I I I finish slightly earlier than I planned. Okay, this part is not uh, finished and it's an ongoing project with some people and some some, some by myself. So something uh, not completed yet. So some parts are not completed yet. Okay. Uh, at least we know that uh, affine Grassmannian slice for type D is realized as the Coulomb branch of quiver gauge theory of type D. So, so if you consider the quiver gauge theory of finite type, then uh, its Coulomb branch is affine Grassmannian slice for the corresponding group. This is what we proved in in one of our paper. So as I said, uh, quiver gay theory of type D, if I consider the quiver variety, which is the, the in, in current terms, it's a Higgs branch of quiver gay theory. And if I to get uh, quiver variety of type D as a fixed point, I should consider the diagram automatism, right? So this is a IQ as the diagram model. And it seems, and so if you, instead of Higgs branch, if I consider the Coulomb branch, somehow miraculously involution is exchanged from the IQ to involution for the affine Grassmannian. So affine Grassmannian for type D is a fixed point set of the affine Grassmannian for type A, but it's, uh, the involution, if you identify a Grassmannian slice with quiver variety, it's different, different involution, right? It's a little bit confusing, but somehow, because uh, I, I, I think this is a, uh, maybe, so Higgs branch and the Coulomb branch are symplectic dual to each other, then uh, maybe this two involution, Evolution for quiver varieties, so coming from the diagonal automorphism, is symplectic dual to the inversion, which is natural for the affine Grassmannian. And in fact, this construction uh, can be generalized to the uh, case of quiver gauge theory of type affine type D. And in this case, again, the, it is expected that the Coulomb branch is a fixed point set of the uh, Coulomb branch for type affine type A. And uh, in my work with Takayama, uh, I proved that the Kuba Gesserba affine, the Coulomb branch of Kuba Gesserba affine type A uh, is so called bow varieties. Then I studied the uh, fixed point set in the bow variety. And I yeah, in this part is more or less uh, established. So this fixed point set is fixed point set in, in bow variety for affine type A is a Coulomb branch of quiver gauge of affine type A. So I explained this, this result in uh, over over buffer last, last four. Okay, uh, so if you believe the symplectic dual uh, Symplectic duality is actually duality. Uh, in fact, I don't believe it, but uh, maybe many more many more people accept it. So then, uh, involution for quiver, dia uh, quiver automorphism, diagram automorphism, but instead of Higgs branch, if we consider the Coulomb branch, then uh, it should be correspond to uh, you another involution for Higgs branch. So if you consider this statement, then it means that, so maybe go back to the, this one. So from this, so if I understand the involution for, for, for the affine, natural, natural for affine Grassmannian in terms of quiver varieties, so I replace uh, the middle vector space 
I first of all I cut the, the diagram in the middle and I replace the middle vertex and make the uh, group for middle vertex from general near group to symplectic or orthogonal group. So this perfectly makes sense as a quiver gaze. Okay, so I consider this kind of quiver gaze, uh, this kind of uh, variant of quiver gaze. And the Coulomb branch can be applied to any pairs of group and the symplectic representation. And, and of course, so we must, I mean, in, in the original, in, in the earlier paper, so we only discussed uh, the case of the so-called, the, the representation of the group is, uh, is of cotangent type. But now if you, the, uh, the anomaly cancellation condition is satisfied, then it's, it is in decent work. It is generated to uh, more general symplectic representation. I think in this particular representation, most of the, I mean, if you assume anomaly condition, it is of cotangent type, but for also symplectic case, it's not. So anyway, so we consider the group, we take the group to be product of general linear groups and the special symplectic group or orthogonal group. And I consider the Coulomb branch. Then uh, this should be uh, isomorphic to quiver variety or bow variety of type D. So this is the expectation. So I, 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 so for this part, I, I don't, uh, I don't check the detail, but it is very likely. So next, uh, so if you believe uh, this simple reality, and maybe you also. Uh, expect this uh, involution is self-pillar to each other, self-mirror to itself, then uh, Higgs branch of autosymplectic quiver is, as I said, by craft processes, it is slices for classical groups, intersection for nilpotent orbit and slices for classical groups. So it should be, the, I mean, the same should be true for Coulomb branch. So we expect uh, the Coulomb branch of this also symplectic quiver gaze of type A is isomorphic to intersection of nilpotent orbit and slices for classical Or as like in the case, even for type A, so we should slightly more general variety, which is called four variety. So maybe we should get its variant. So this is an expectation. But in fact, uh, this also symplectic quiver gaze doesn't make sense not only for of type A. So if you just consider uh, this kind of quiver. So the only condition is that uh, uh, SP and uh, symplectic and orthogonal group appears alternatingly. So you don't need to assume the original quiver to be type A. So you, you can consider, for example, type D quiver and you can put in alternating order. Uh, the maybe exceptional case is if you have considered affine, affine type A linking diagram, then it will be alternating, you must, the number of vertex must be even, but this is a mild condition. And in fact, this involution, I don't explain this involution, but iota n is, has a description in terms of Coulomb branch. It's given in one of our paper. And this definition uh, can be generated arbitrary quiver. So it seems it's natural to, Guess that if you like consider we consider the more general also symplectic quiver gaze of, of any for any any graph, then we should get the fixed point set of the involution, which is defined for arbitrary graph, arbitrary quiver gaze. And this is ongoing project with Finkelberg and Hanami. 
So still, it's still, uh, uh, we cannot, I, I cannot report the detail of this result yet, but I hope to uh, explain it in near future. Okay, uh, that's all what I want to say. So I stop here. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much. Let's uh, thank Any questions from the offline audience? I have a question. So you said that you don't believe that simplex technology is a duality. Can you say what you meant by that? Ah, so as far, I mean, I recently, con I, I, I somehow recent, I mean, the, the construction of the Higgs branch and the Coulomb branch are not really, uh, how to say, uh, uh, the same. I mean, the, so the, 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 the constructions are somehow very different construction. So if I apply the Coulomb branch construction, I, I get some, some variety and Suppose this variety is constructed as a Hamiltonian reduction of vector space, and then I apply the Coulomb branch for that construction, then I don't have any reason to return back to the original uh, Hamiltonian reduction. This is clear because somehow, I mean, uh, here it's easy to uh, construct an example because somehow the same variety. Ah, yeah, so, so, the, I, I, so in fact, we recently studied the, the case of the uh, uh, nilpotent cone, the, the full nilpotent cone of the orthogonal group of odd, odd rank. Then, uh, in fact, uh, its Coulomb branch seems to be not uh, isomorphic to nilpotent cone for the symplectic group. That is uh, was a little surprising to me. But if you start with nilpotent cone for the symplectic group and you realize it by also symplectic group, its Coulomb branch is a uh, uh, orthogonal group for auto rank. So the opposite direction is, is true. But if you apply the, the in, in opposite way, then it's not. So it's a little surprising. So I didn't have much example before, but in Taipei, the, the, some, some other examples are much, how to say, um, much exotic examples. But nilpotent, I think everybody believe that nilpotent cone should be a standard example. And I be really surprised why this statement even for nilpotent cone fails. So for nilpotent cone, you're saying that it fails in what case? Hmm? What case nilpotent cone, nilpotent for cone for, for type B and type C. So you say that for one of them it's true, for the other it's not. Mm -hmm. I realize the new potential cone by using also symplectic quiver like this. So this is the, the result of craft processing. And I use the same also symplectic quiver to consider the Coulomb branch. Uh, but, but in this case, this anomaly cancellation condition, does it, is it satisfied? Yeah, anomaly can, can cancellation condition is satisfied. Yeah, but uh, Misha, Misha told me that Lenin don't believe that doesn't believe that the the uh, cotangent bundle to the symplectic group should not have integral system. Is it true? Do you believe so, Lenin? You can say it again. So cotangent bundle to flag variety for for symplectic group should not have integral system. Sorry, cotangent bundle to what variety to? Uh... Flag variety to the simple, uh, which is by rational the same as uh, uh, is as Newton called. So uh, I don't know. You want to make a note? Uh, okay. uh, I'm sure it's impossible to prove. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult to prove such a statement. But anyway, so, 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 so we That's so the Coulomb branch. Coulomb branch is very similar to very similar to the nilpotent cone for symplectic group, but if I carefully study this, it it is different. Mm. Is it uh, like maybe find some finite cover of it? 
Yeah, even I mean, they, in fact, so there's the, the 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 difficult question for yeah. Maybe I didn't explain it carefully, but so here for for crust processing, I need to consider the orthogonal group, not the special orthogonal groups. And even for Higgs brand, there's a subtlety uh, for for this choice. And for S4 also, crust processing uh, study the uh, Hamilton reduction for for SO. And they show that this is not nilpotent orbit in general, and they find that this is the so-called special pieces. And for Coulomb branch, it's a little bit more delicate. So it seems uh, if I take orthogonal group, then it seems to be birational to nilpotent cone, but uh, the covering degree is, uh, I mean, generic I want one, but a different variety. Um, yeah, and maybe I have a short comment. Of course, uh, right? I'm not sure. Maybe it's out of uh, context. But uh, since you mentioned the uh, girlfriend scientific type repeatable systems, uh, so recently, maybe what was it? A couple of years ago, Hoffman and Levy, in the of course in the in the, in the context of reals, they constructed uh, girlfriend scientific type integrable systems. On orbits for all types in a somewhat uniform fashion. So, in particular, for symplectic, whatever, E6, E8, anything. But, uh, but I guess here the question would be right, how, how does it talk to theory of a, of a C? Because they were doing it over R and also Gelfin Cycle type systems, they have singularities. So, what kind of singularities you admit? But just maybe. To say that uh, in, in this uh, standard setup of uh, co joint orbits of compact Lie groups, uh, there are now Gelfin Cycle type systems for all types. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's true that, that the generic fiber of this integrable system is the product of the stars, or, or is this? No, but or is, is, uh, like, uh, you, if you complexify this, you, uh, that, that I don't know, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, so they, uh, they, they, their theory is over reals. Now, uh -huh. uh, that, that could be a question. I mean, it's just algebraic, it's just algebraic, please. Is the engineer fiber rational? Or, or? Um, yeah, I, their construction is so complicated. Even that, I uh -huh. cannot say at once. So, of course, the generic fibers. At all, as it should be by mm -hmm. whatever we will have known, then I mean, whether, whether it would complexify well, mm -hmm. I don't really know. Yeah, here I, mean, I should say that the integrable system uh, is, is a holomorphic map everywhere. And if I require it to be birational, just, 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 just the rational homology, then as I said, the, the near potent form is. Is birational to the Coulomb, it's very likely to be isomorphic, birationally isomorphic to the Coulomb branch. So we do have birational integral system. That is my understanding, current understanding. So it is somehow the, for, for the Coulomb branch construction. So this is holomorphic everywhere. So this makes a little difference. Uh, okay, any other questions uh, from the online maybe? Uh, <laughs> nothing in the chat. Okay, so then let's thank the speaker again.